Hi, everybody, and welcome to another super exciting tier list. Isn't that super fun? I actually love making these. So uh, first of all, if you clicked on the thumbnail, uh, thank you to Tranquil for rendering the Leviathan doing what it's doing in this thumbnail. If you haven't seen the thumbnail, go check it out and say thanks to Tranquil in the comments because it's beautiful and I love it. And uh, so yeah, what are we gonna do in this video? I'm gonna be rating every single enemy that is in the game currently as of the day of posting this video. Of course, this is subject to change. The game is in early access. We still have more stuff to come, which just means that I can use this as more content again in the future. Um, and speaking of that, if you like this content, you should go ahead and consider subscribing to the channel. We're on that way to 1000 subs. It would be super duper appreciated. So <clears throat> also excuse the frog in my throat. Um, of course, this is a spoiler warning. We're going to be talking about some of the endgame bosses and other like lair bosses and things. So if you don't want that information, then go ahead and click off. And uh, yeah, so the way I'm going to be rating these is based on how fun the enemy is to fight, right? Because a good enemy should be one that is challenging, but has good counters, is interesting, has fun moves, is fun to play against. Um, a bad enemy is one that's just like does the same thing or super basic or it's just like overpowered overtuned or undertuned whatever the case is so i'll try to explain all these this will probably be a longer video because as you can see over there there are a lot of enemies um so we're gonna go through them uh one by one i'm just gonna do them in order so uh let's get into it so first one we've got up here uh is the hull keeper um and I mean, this guy is an elite, so he's an elite version of this dude. I can't remember what they're called. The guys who push and pull, uh, the bosuns, I think they're called. Um, and uh, dude, first of all, has an amazing hat. So let's like let's just start with that. The hat is super cool. Um, he does have some fun, interesting uh, like moves. I believe he does the Riptide is the move that he does. Um, so he's he's always challenging to face. He's definitely like a oh god, this is I gotta I gotta be a little careful here. Um, and he also has like a fucking awesome, cool design. So I'm putting him in A class, really cool enemy. Um, next we come to the bosun. This is uh, just very similar to like the groupers in Darkest Dungeon 1. They push and pull uh, depending on where they're located. And so they're very good at disturbing your team. Um, they do have a stun, but beyond that, they're just kind of dull. Like they push pull, that's it. They don't really have anything fun to it. Their counter is like, they don't really even have a hard counter because if you move them to a different position, they just move the other side of your team. Um, I don't like that you can get mashes of like four of them and they can stun like half your team really quickly. Um, enemies with baseline stuns, I think are a little overtuned, um, but there's not very many of them. I wouldn't say he's super fun to fight. I'm gonna put him in C tier. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I didn't do the order of this. So we're going straight into a confession boss. This is the Shackles of Denial. I'm probably going to put them all in the same tier because um, I consider it like one boss. They're like one enemy. They just do different things. So you've got the three different shackles here. Uh, the one that does healing, the one that does melee, the one that does range, and the one that does um, stress damage or locks it, right? Um, it's a pretty fun fight. I know a lot of people say it's too easy. I really, I actually just lost a run to the shackles. Um, I really like the shackles. I think it's one of the most dynamic uh, confession boss fights. It allows for the most strategy, like you can play multiple different teams and counter it in multiple different ways. You can have range teams, melee teams, you can use dots on them, you can use just damage on them, you can try to dodge a bunch of stuff, you can try to put stun resist on. It's a pretty fun fight. So, like, I honestly, I know this is like, maybe people are going to say this is dumb, but I'm going to put the shackles up here. I think it's a really fun fight. I think it changes every time. It's random, which, you know, where the locks are. Um, so you never know exactly what to expect. It requires you to strategize. It requires you to think. It's a tough fight. It can still screw you over if you're not careful. Um, yeah, I think it's super fun. Um, next, we have the Skeever, the Swine Skeever. <clears throat> uh, many people hate this enemy. He's very, very tough. Uh, he's not super tough. He can just deal a crap ton of damage. He can stun you. He can move you. He can AoE th hit three people. Um, he's just a very... Like, oh god, he's a he's a tough enemy. He's not even an elite. He's just like a regular enemy, but just like a tough variant of an enemy. I'm putting him in B class. I kind of dread fighting them. Um, but the the thing I really like about them is they add a little bit of the variety that's needed to the the sluice, which they really should add some more enemies in there. But hey, whatever. It's what it is. Um, next we have the baby. I fucking hate the baby. 
Um, it's a fun enemy to fight. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's actually not a fun enemy to fight, right? It's It just spawns a bunch of tokens and then it just causes problems like the idea behind it is kind of cool i do like the whole transformation thing it allows for like some like what's gonna sp excuse me what's gonna spawn i have no idea but like getting like a four mash of these or even two of them and the fact that they can crit so heavily or just apply dodge to themselves it just feels like it completely just pulls all your focus into that and then a lot of times it just doesn't matter anyway. And then they get that crazy buff when they do mutate into whatever they are. I I think the concept behind them is fun. I just don't enjoy fighting them like at all. They're not dog shit, but like I just don't like fighting them. It's a cool mechanic. That's its only saving grace in my opinion. Um, next we have the captain. This is one of my favorite enemies. I really love this guy. I think his design is really good. I think... His move sets are really impressive. He's a really strong enemy. He also has like AOE buffs to his team. He's one of those enemies that's like, oh god, like I really like this guy. I think he's an S class enemy. And just because of how cool like I love seeing the captain. I think it's just a cool idea that he's this like support character. But he also deals a lot of damage. He can also apply like barnacles and stuff. It's a pretty, pretty rough enemy. He's tough. So um then we have the Docker. Uh the Docker is like, he's tough. Um, make way is a brutal attack and can really screw you over. He has a really high crit chance, it feels like. Maybe that's just perception bias. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, he's fine to fight. I don't, like, enjoy fighting him, but I don't also go, like, I go kind of like, oh, God, he's going to do a lot of damage, but I'm also not, like, Ugh, not this guy. Um, that's how I feel about this lady. The fucking fishmonger, I hate her, right? I think that she's overtuned with two attacks, the ability to give herself crit, dodge plus, um, her her hard counter obviously is pulling her to the front, but that is easier said than done in the shroud. I think she's one of the enemies that like makes people hate the shroud a lot because she just is very overtuned. She does do a lot of damage, um, and she gets extra actions, which is just especially when you can get two of them on the same team. Um, that's four actions. That the action economy is busted that way. Um, so yeah, not not super big fan here. Um, next we have the Leviathan. Um, I actually don't mind the Leviathan fight that much, except for this fucking thing. That fucking thing, the hand, the hand is the part that sucks. The Leviathan himself, he's fine, right? The fight needs to be tuned a little bit, but the hand is dog shit, right? The undertow, and then it gets three actions per turn, it just batters your whole team around. Um, that's really shitty. Also, the Leviathan is going into C-Class. I think the design is incredible for the Leviathan. The reason I think it's going into C, I would want it to go into C class, is because of the fact that it's um, the gaze attack where it like marks two targets. It can't be dodged. It can't be blinded, right? It goes anyway, right? Which is fine, except for the fact that it also does damage and has a decent crit rate. If you've got an ability that can't be dodged and it can't be evaded by blind, it shouldn't be able to do damage, right? That should just be a support ability that then allows the hand to do what it's gonna do. Why is it avoid? It's stupid dumb okay um next we have these guys the the uh rat boys cabin cabin boys i i don't remember what they're called the wharf rats that's it i'm mixing up two different people that's a cabin boy and this is a wharf rat um i love the design on these guys the whole bubble head thing is super cool um they are kind of boring like they're pretty mid like they do they have briny spray and they have sucker punch they do have stealth too which feels a little out of place like i don't really understand the mechanic of them having stealth like why do they get it and not others um yeah it's okay they're like they're like meh like i don't really care about fighting them but i also don't dislike them um the next one we have is the altar i think the altar is super fun i think it adds a lot adds a huge amount of fun to the cultist fights especially because they're different in every region and this is the reason why they're different in every region they're obviously a bit of a pain to deal with sometimes flesh weaving can be super annoying bone weaving can really screw you over um, but I think, I mean, it's not a super hard enemy to fight, but it does make these fights more dynamic. So yeah, I'm going to put this in A-class. I think it was a really good addition, the altar. Um, <clears throat> so next we have the Cardinal. The Cardinal I dislike. Um, I just don't like fighting the Cardinal. I don't think he's necessarily a bad enemy. I think he is, uh, I think the Deacon and the Cardinal are made to be counters to different kinds of teams. And I just struggle. For, like, I've lost more runs to the cardinal than i probably have a lot of other things just because like i don't like you t i don't know i just don't like fighting him i think he's a fine enemy i'm just putting him c tier because i'm salty about it so you know that is what it is uh the cherub is just also annoying 
I, I don't like... I think the altar is a really good support enemy. I think the cherub is just an annoying enemy. I don't think he, like... I don't hate fighting him, so he's not dog shit, but I just don't like fighting him either. Like, he's just a pain of all the dodge and then just does all these little weak attacks. And, um, yeah, not a super big fan. Uh, the Deacon, I think, is a B-tier enemy. I think he's he's kind of fun to fight, but he's also just very basic. I do like his, like, the whole flip between melee and, and range damage kind of thing. I think that's an interesting mechanic that I do enjoy. Um, but I don't think he's, like, super fun to fight, but I do think he's, like, he's, like, you know, I'll move him up to A tier. I think he's pretty fun. He's fun to fight, but he's not, I don't, like, rave about it. I just don't dislike fighting him. I actually kind of enjoy the strategy of, like, kind of trying to keep him occupied while I deal with the support enemies. I hate doing that with the Cardinal. The Cardinal feels like way too much of a balancing act, but the Deacon, I can be, like, okay, I need to blind him or use dodge or, like, taunt so I can, like, deal with the backline support enemies. Um, yeah. And then I'll put Evangelist in B. I think Evangelist is, she's a DPS character. She deals a lot of, you know, damage and bleed and she has crit chance and stuff. And she is a bit annoying, but I think that's just because you deal with them so much. She's better than the Cherub, that's for sure. I just don't like, I don't love fighting them, but I don't dislike them. So that's where the B tier is going to be. Um, <clears throat> Exemplar, this guy. This guy's super fun to fight. I think the Exemplar is one of the best boss fights that's been introduced into the game easily. He has a lot of, like, he's tough. The, the one thing I do dislike about this fight, and I think a lot of people agree with that, is the, the double roll where he gets to go, like, prelude right into the fall and there's nothing in between. I know they've said they're trying to work on that. I, I don't know what the fix is to that besides just forcing it to never happen. Um, but I will say that, like, besides that... His fight is one of the most fun. It has a lot of like different ways that you can counter it. Do you deal with the add and remove the altar? Do you ignore the altar and like try to deal with um, the combo generation and stop him from using stop him from using pillar sacrifice or um, the fall on somebody with the combo token? Um, do you just go whole ham and just like try to kill him before he can even get to exaltation? Um, do you blind him? Do you, do you know, there's loads of different ways to deal with him. Um, you can, he can be stunned, he can get dots, he can be moved around, you can, and it's dynamic too, because some, if you let the, the ad come in, it could be an evangelist, it could be an altar, you know, it changes the way you play. I really enjoy that. Multiple different teams can fight him and win, multiple different strategies work on him. Um, he's very, very tough, but he's 100% beatable, and I, I think that's a great combination of, like, boss and... Um, you know, difficulty to fun level. I love fighting the Exemplar. He, he ends runs, but he's fun. So, um, so next we come to uh, the Herald, which I think he's come a long way. Um, I think he's a B tier. Again, I don't dip, like, I don't go like, ugh, a Herald, like, as in, like, he's annoying to fight. I think he does a role, which is that he gives stress. Um, they've definitely made him less of a problem. Like, Clarion Call used to do, like, three guaranteed. You used to be able to get four Heralds sometimes. He now has a like he now when he's in the positions one and two he's like out of position which i think is very helpful so you can disrupt him by shuffling and things like that i think he's fine i really enjoy his design i think he's got a really really cool design so i'm cool with him b tier he's average don't really care one way or the other but yeah okay um so next one is the next confession boss i'm gonna log all these together um and this is the focused fault and I, and I think a lot of people, maybe not a lot of people, I think this fight is in a bad place right now. I don't think it's particularly fun. I think it does the opposite of what I care for in fights, which is that you need a very specialized kind of team to deal with him. Um, you need to be doing like taunts. You have to like force the focus into one person. And there's really not many ways to do that outside of like guard and taunt. Like that's it. Otherwise, you just get the focus on everybody and then you get your whole team cleaved down. Um, I think the idea behind the fight is kind of cool. I enjoyed it initially, but the more and more I fight him, the more I'm like, it, I just dislike it. I'm not saying it's impossible to beat. I've beaten it quite a few times, but I think it's just an annoying fight. I don't enjoy going into that fight. I don't like go like, yes, like we're going to go fight the focus fault. That's a fun fight. Like I'm ready for it. I just go like, I hope I can get through this. It's a slog. I hate the first phase of this like weird. I know it's supposed to be kind of like a puzzle. I'm supposed to kind of figure it out. But like, there's only like a few ways to do it. You have heroes with taunt. You Hopefully they go fast enough. Or maybe you get a fast hero to use like Encore on the Jester or Noisemaker or something. Like there's like a few handful of ways to do the same thing. 
it just doesn't allow for the variety of play that I really enjoy in these kinds of fights and encounters, especially after four hours. I really dislike having to pick a team at the crossroads and go, how can this defeat the focus fault and not worry? Like, I want to think about the three and a half hours before this fight. Like, that's the 90 percent of the game. Um, and then to, like, have to limit my team selection to a few heroes. Maybe it'll be different once we get more heroes and we see if there's more variety of things that we can do. Of course, we have two more heroes that are coming that could greatly expand the, the number of strategies that are available for this fight. And so I may just be a little early on this one. But right now, I don't think it's in a good place. I especially dislike that the initial reaction off the, the bat was to just increase the HP of the boss by 100% and then give it a, like, give it, like, suppress is fine. But they just were like, instead of balancing the boss, I feel like it just slammed health into it. And we're like, okay, here you go. Like, uh, it just felt a little sloppy. So I, I I have high hopes that this fight can go somewhere, but I just, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, okay, next we're going on to the Fanatics. Uh, we have the Librarian here. I would say the Librarian is like a B-class boss. Um, he's much better than he was. Like, he's not like a pushover like he used to be. I do sometimes dread this fight, but only because like he requires a specific set of team members, um, like a, a fairly specific like way of dealing with him. But there are multiple ways you can like push the books. You can try to you know do damage in the back row. Um, you can just kind of hold out and hope that your team can just smack him down when he gets to the front. There are multiple ways that you can take this boss. Um, I do just kind of dread him though. I like I don't know. I don't really care one way or the other. I don't think he's really really well designed. I don't think he's dog shit designed. I have fun fighting him most of the time. I lose sometimes, I win sometimes. I think he's fine. Um, I think the the pit fighter is one of the coolest enemies in the game. I love the idea of this big beefy dude um, who is just like slamming you, with, like just literally punching you in the face, can take a lot of damage, and then he gets like he gets more burn. Like his passive of like getting like the ability to burn the longer you let him live. I think is a really unique way of like creating a threat that is like initially not too bad. He does some decent damage and stuff, but like the longer you let him live, the more deadly he becomes, especially because it, he gets two turns around. So um, I think he's a big threat, big dude that actually goes really quick. And I think he's a really cool design. I love him. I think he's super fun to fight. I kind of wish I ran into him more often. Um, I'm going to have to try to figure out which one of these is which. I think this is the this is the flayer. Right. Yeah. OK, I'm going to I'm going to get all the fanatics up here because I think they're they're all kind of. So this is the flare. This is the guy with the long skewer. I might be getting their images mixed up. They're all kind of hard to tell apart. Um, I think he's I think he's B tier. I, again, I don't really dread fighting him. His repost is annoying. The thing I hate about all fanatics is the ignite mechanic. But that's like I think that's, you know, it's universal. To, like, it's just not a fun mechanic, in my opinion. Um, but he's fine to fight. Um, I think her ladyship is an A-class enemy. I think that she's a really good support elite. She's tough. She's like, ooh, this is a tough fight. She's going to give a lot of extra, like, um, support to the other heroes, with, like Dodge Plus and stuff, or the other enemies, sorry. And uh, with her heals and things like that, I think she's got a really cool design. I think she's pretty cool. Um, sacrificial. This Sacrificial is dog shit. And the reason I say that is because I've just never really had a threat. The only time I've ever had threat from him is when I accidentally take the combat modifier for shuffle and he ends up in the first round, like the first position. Um, besides that, I think I've maybe seen his attack twice in like 600 hours of gameplay. Um, the other thing is that other enemies on his team like counteract him, like a spe specifically the flare. He also spawns with, uh, lost souls a lot and all of those like want to move forward. So they just keep pushing him back. So I get that he's like it, but like the thrall is the one I equivalent him to in like Darkest Dungeon 1. The Thrall would blow up after a couple rounds regardless. The longer you let him live, the higher the chance it would happen. Um, and I think that that threat was always present, while as this threat, not so much. Doesn't really present much of a threat. I don't really have any fun fighting him. He's a cool idea, but he just doesn't seem to work well in practice. Um, next, we have the Whipper. I don't know if I'm getting these guys in the right order. The Whipper is the one that the, the Morning Star, is that what that's called? No, it's a Flail. Morning Star is uh, the Mace, right? Anyway, um, the flail thing. Um, I hate fighting these guys. I I I think they're fine. I think that with the fact that they get ignite and then they can just spam. Um, ta I think it's called Taskmaster or whatever it is, where they just spam the AOE hit that hits and burns everybody and then lowers their burn resistance. And they can like they can spam that. It's really annoying. They can also self ignite again. I think that's a problem. 
I don't mind them being ignited by another hero, like enemy that then takes their turns that they, they, they can then do their stuff, but meh. Um, and then next we have the Immolatist, I think B-class again. I think she's just a slightly worse version than her ladyship. I think she's a good support hero. She has good design. So, yeah, I like her, but I don't think she's anything crazy. So, um, okay, so next we're moving on to the Tangle enemies. I think that was it for the, like, the Flare enemies and stuff. Yeah. So next we're moving on to the Tangle enemies. Um... The first one we have is the Bullseye Barret. And the only reason I'm putting him in C tier is because I think he has the potential to be a really fun enemy to fight. He has the marked for death mechanic, but he never seems to hit the people he has marked for death. He like does the mark and then he hits somebody else. And I find that really like that has happened to me like nine out of ten times. I don't think I've even ever I, I can't even recall if I've seen him actually target the person with mark for death. It seems like a weird mechanic. I don't know if it's supposed to synergize maybe with other people on the team and other enemies are supposed to do the, hit the focus and they do more damage. I don't really know. Um, I just don't think he's very good. I don't think he's, like, as far as an elite goes, I don't feel super threatened by him. I just treat him like a regular Arbalist, um, which I'm going to put the Arbalist in. I'm actually going to put the Arbalist in A tier. Um, and the, again, the only reason I'm doing this is because for an elite, he's not, he doesn't feel elite. But the Arbalist feels like a good backline damage dealer enemy, right? An enemy that like is a threat from behind. They can deal a lot of damage. Um, they can apply bleed. I'm pretty sure I might be misremembering on that one. But like I look at them and I go, okay, this is a backline threat that I need to move forward. Very similar to the Arbalest in Darkest Dungeon One. He's like this guy has a high crit chance. He deals a lot of damage. Like yeah, he's kind of weak. But if I can't get him forward and knock him down or kill him while he's in the back or blind him or something like that, um, I'm going to be taking a lot of damage from this guy. I think that's a good way for an enemy to be. It's challenging. There's ways to counter it like it uh i think the bishop bishop goes in dog shit why um i think that he just ends up not really being as much of a threat as the devs intended him to be the like reanimation mechanic is cool i like that but i very rarely see it because of just how difficult it is for him to even pull off his own move um smite is uh, like he deals a decent amount of damage um, and I kind of like the whole idea behind like having to use penance to like give himself special tokens and allow him to reanimate the dead, but it just doesn't work very well in practice. And I just don't really care to fight him. I just kind of knock him down really quickly and like, that's about it. He doesn't really have anything else going for him. Uh, I'm going to skip over the general for now. Uh, this is the foot soldier. I would say foot soldier is B tier. Again, I don't dread fighting these. I don't really care to fight them. I will say they're a bit of a chore. The double block is kind of annoying. Um, but that's kind of supposed to be the point. They're like, you know, frontline soldiers, they're armored, they're supposed to be tanking a lot of damage. Yeah, I think they're fine. I think they do their point, they do the thing they're supposed to do. They do can't they do have a what seems to be a pretty high crit rate. Um also their debuff doesn't seem to be the biggest deal in the world, like increasing or lowering your bleed resist, which I guess works with the knight and maybe also the arbalist, but eh, I don't know. Um no, oh sorry, that's not okay, sorry. Let me replace that. That's that's the foot soldier. This is the drummer. Um, man, the drummer is a tough one. The, the drummer is one of my favorite designs in the game. I love what they did with this. Even like adding the music, like musical notes when he plays and stuff. I think he's a super cool concept. Um, but he irritates the shit out of me <laughs> because of the of what it, like how he works and stuff. But like, I don't think that in a bad way, like a lot of enemies irritate me because I think they're badly designed. I honestly think he's kind of fun. Like, he adds, like, a a bit of interest to it. Like, he's a pain in the ass, but he's supposed to be a pain in the ass, and it comes off fine. He's pretty easy to deal with, but he does, like, give a lot of support, especially, like, the move, the inability to move um, the other enemies on the team is a really, really good one. I like that. So I, I think he's going to be... I, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with him being A tier. He's fun to see. Uh, his design is incredible. And uh, next we have the Knight. The knight is one of my favorite enemies. I fucking love the knight. I think this dude, he's big, he's impressive, he's intimidating, his attacks hit hard. I love the whole mechanic of like when he hits death's door that he actually gets stronger. Um, and this kind of idea of like the last stand deal, um, which is a very interesting, unique mechanic to him. Um, I think he's just really cool. I, I think he's a lot of fun to fight. Um, I enjoy his synergies with the drummer. That's another thing I like about the drummer is the synergies that he has with different, like giving specialized tokens to the Arbalist or to the Knight or, you know, whatever the case is. I think that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I like him. I think he's, I think he's an S class, super fun to fight enemy that I enjoy coming across. Obviously like the big, the big enemies, I think. So, um, 
Next, we have the general, um, the dreaming general. Uh, honestly, man, I don't even know. I want to put him. I wouldn't say he's dog shit. No, you know, I'm going to be bold. I'm going to say he's dog shit for a lair boss. He's the by far the most boring lair boss. There's like you just hit the taproot, which, by the way, the taproot just can, it's not an enemy. Uh, you just smack the taproot and then like just trickle him down and you eat stress and like that's it there's there's very little like nuance to his fight i guess you could try to like dps him down without hitting the tap root but like again it comes down to just there being one way to deal with this boss and then every other way is just really suboptimal and just doesn't work and uh it's a slog the fight takes a long time and just you end up with a bunch of stress and you get some decent trinkets and i never like feel like oh this is a super fun fight or wow that was a challenge and just come out of it like oh i gotta deal with all this stress now so yeah not a big fan of that one um so yeah, I, yeah it's just not my favorite um okay so now we're moving on to the fetter or the fodor i think it's the fetter and i think the first one we have here is the butcher so this is kind of one of the baseline enemies he's the one with the cleaver um i think he's just kind of boring to fight compared like a lot of the enemies in this area are pretty fun um and interesting i think he's just boring i think he's just like and he's pro i think he's supposed to be kind of the cannon fodder um you know he deals a bleed and stuff but he does, there's nothing interesting about fighting him there's no like i don't like i think he can he can eat you know feed on the goat and that can like you know do some stuff but like eh, i don't know i just don't find him super fun um dinner cart i'm gonna put in b only because i find him kind of interesting to fight but he's also like bullshit sometimes of his crits and just the amount of damage he could he can do um yeah i just like i don't dread fighting him but he like he's a tough enemy don't get me wrong but like i also don't think his mechanics are like his generating of like corpses is a pretty interesting mechanic but it only generally seems to benefit him um i don't end really end up in situations where like other enemies are eating the corpses and stuff and um i do think that he has like i wish he was a bit more positional um, in the fact that, like, I think he should be a backline enemy and he shouldn't really have as much damage as he can do in the front line. Um, I think that when you get two dinner carts, that's, like, a really shitty combination because they just kind of flip back and forth and do a shit ton of bleed and crit and blight. And it's just, like, and there's just so much health between the two of them that that mash makes me want to put them lower. But by himself, he's, like, a okay, like, damage sponge, damage dealer. Um, he's a threat. Like, you have to deal with him, but he's nothing crazy. So, um... Uh, again, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna put the boss to last. Um, but I think that should be the way that we do this. So I get the, all the other ones forward here. Um, that goes back there. Okay, so the next one we have is the goat. Um, the goat can be a bit bullshit, but I actually really enjoy fighting him. I think he's like a very interesting kind of frontliner um, with the shuffle mechanics, but also the feed mechanics, um, and also just like uh, he, like he's fairly weak, but he's like pretty strong. Um, so I think I, I really like the goat personally, so I'm going to have to touch my camera. It, uh, it, it unfocused me, so sorry. <laughs> um, I like fighting the goat. I think he's fun. Um, next we have uh, I think Black Phillip is his name, which is the the elite version of the goat. Um, honestly, I'm actually going to put him in B tier. And the reason is, is like he doesn't have a death blow resist. He does get two actions um, and he has a pretty powerful move. But honestly, I just end up usually killing him super fast and then he just doesn't stick around because he dies instantly I, I think he should have a dbr i think all the elites should have a dbr i don't know why he doesn't um which i think just makes him kind of a like his design is super cool but i just think other than that it just kind of like feels like a lack like a slightly stronger version of the regular goat or the livestock i think they're called um so yeah i don't know um next we have the baron i like the baron i think the baron's a fun enemy i think uh He's a good damage sponge. I think he has a good mechanic where he eats the when he eats and like he has the bilious cannon, which is good, the fleshy backhand. He also can support other enemies on the team by giving them um the uh, tongue lashing, I think it's called. So I think he's I think he's got a lot going for him. He has different ways that he, you know, support damage, damage tank. He's not super tough to deal with. I don't dread fighting him. I actually kind of like him. I think he's got really cool animations. There's a little, there's a little Santa Claus laugh and stuff. So yeah, I think he's fun. Um, next we have the maid. I think the maid is C class, and the reason is, is I just again I find her kind of boring. Um, she does have some interesting like mechanics with the goat, where she can like cure the goat of their dots and then um, give it some buffs. But I generally end up never seeing that because I usually just kill the goat super quick, and then and then by herself she's kind of boring. 
So I just don't really, like, I don't really think anything of her. I just kind of, like, leave her till last and then kill her. Um, the lady is dog shit. <laughs> I, th I think this is personal bias. I dislike this enemy. Um, I dislike the ex the free action she gets when she gets to eat something and then just give herself regen, and that counts as a free action, and then she gets to go again. Um, I dislike how positionally she can work from any position, but she just does like one attack and just spams it over and over again, and they're both uh, cleave attacks, which is weird. Um, I hate that then she can also eat a corpse and um, on top of the goat. She, she can eat on the goat, and then she can eat a corpse as well. She seems to have too many of, like, the specialized mechanics. It's like, pick one, not both. Um, it's like, the Baron can't eat, he can't feed on the goat. As far as I know, I don't think he can. Um, but the lady, she can feed on the goat, and she can eat a corpse. And then they have different things, So and she gets a big attack as well. Which is, like, three enemies that get, like, a big attack based on eating, gorging one of the, the livestock. So, or a corpse, sorry. So, I don't know. Um... Uh, the meat for the the harvest child I'm going to put in does this count. They just adds like yes, they do damage and they have mechanics and stuff, but they're they're not the the part of the fight. So the harvest child, I am going to put the harvest child as a a class. I think the harvest child is probably my favorite layer boss. I think again it comes down to the fact that this fight has multiple ways of dealing with it. Um, it can get out of hand pretty quick. It can force you to. It can kill you. Um, but it also, like, is fun, in my opinion. I like the Harvest Hunger mechanic. I like that it can be countered fairly easily with multiple options. You have Holy Water. You have Indiscriminate Science. Um, you can shuffle your team by using, like, Play Out or Battle Ballad or other shuffle abilities to kind of force the person with hunger back. You can use Debuff Resist. Um, there's ways to deal with it, which I think are good. I like the the shuffling that the, the Harvest Child does. He does different attacks as he moves up and then moves back. Um, hits the back line, hits the front line, makes him challenging, while also making him not too difficult. If you're prepared for him, you can deal with him. Um, he's susceptible to some dots. He can be DPS down. You can focus the meats if you'd like. Like, you can hit the big meat so it never hits the front rows. I think he's a super fun fight. I don't, or, or like, he's a fun fight. I don't think he's like A, like S class. I don't think he's like, oh my god, I love fighting this boss. But I think very, very fun fight. Like, I definitely don't dislike fighting them. So, um, Oh, here's an whoops, I missed one of the fanatics here. Uh this is the shaman, right? Um shaman is B class. Shaman shaman's an okay support character, but I also don't really think much of them. They just blind and then they like heal and ignite, which is annoying. I think it's just a worse version of honestly, you know what? Screw it. putting in C class. It's a worse version of the Immolatist, in my opinion. Just a worse version of the it's like the same character, but worse. So um all right, so next we have uh, the Act 2 Confession boss, which is the Seething Sigh. This one used to be dog shit. I think it's A-class now. I think this is a very fun fight. Um, I do think it is a little limited in its options of how you deal with it. You have field hit back line and front line, um, but there are multiple teams that can do that. Um, I do think that the fight is now much more balanced than it used to be with the way that you deal with the breath tokens and how the damage has changed about how much damage you do to them. I think it's a fun fight. I think it's a good end game boss fight that doesn't make me feel like I get cheated if I lose. Like I feel like I'm just if I'm unprepared for it, I lose. But if I'm prepared for it, I have a really good chance at it. I think it's fun. I don't think it's super fun. I think it still can screw you over sometimes and feel a little bit unfair. But I think it's much better than it used to be. So definitely better than the focused fault, but not as good as denial in my opinion. So um yeah, we're still we're still going. I said this would be a longer video. This one might be close to an hour, so we still we still got some time to go. So try to chug through some more of these. Um, next we have the carrion eater. I think this is the smaller one, right? Yes. Yeah, so this is the baby carrion eater. I can't remember what the difference is. I think corpse eater or something. I don't know. So the little one, um, in the creature den. Um, uh, again, I say B. I say B class. It's you know, it doesn't feel like a crazy threat. I don't dread fighting them. I don't really care to fight them either. Um, but I will say the big brother is A-class. I think, like, this one requires some thought. Like, oh, you really have to be careful about letting it eat a corpse. You have to be managing the corpses. Um, you know, this one turning into a big one is annoying. But the big one, the fact that it can still eat corpses and then get, like, crit tokens and stuff, plus all the negative tokens it can give you, can make this, like, it doesn't feel like the biggest threat in the creature den, but it very quickly can team up with other enemies, like spiders and dogs, to, like, stack some crazy damage. So um, I think it's an A-class. I enjoy fighting it, so... Next, we have Lost Soul, B-Class. He's just there. I mean, diseases have to come from somewhere. I don't really care the fact that he can deal disease because you can deal with them so easily. 
Um, it gives like a low tier enemy like a pretty decent threat, and I think that's a good balance of like, oh, I don't need to worry about these guys, except for the fact that they can give me diseases, which can really screw my run. Um, but I don't dread fighting them. I don't love fighting them. They're just there. Um, I think the uh, the urchin is maybe a class again, kind of an annoying enemy to fight, but I enjoy this like mechanic with the, the stealth mechanic and the the crit and like the fact that you can like pull them forward and it stops them from doing things. Like they can't do their attack if they're not in the back row, or they can't stealth if they're not, or you can try to remove their stealth of a couple different um, abilities, and that will stop them from doing their big attack even if they have the crit token. Um, so I kind of enjoy them. I will say I don't like fighting the widow. Um, she's like she's not even a support character. The fact she can deal horror and stun um, and blind is just kind of weird. There's a lot for like a kind of lower class baseline enemy. It's a lot of things that she can deal with. She's not super hard to kill, but she's annoying to fight. So definitely not my favorite. Um, I do like the woodsman. I think he's a super cool um, design. I do like his guard thing. I love his like the the design with like the dolls and stuff. It's very like heart wrenching. Um, and you know he he's a heavy damage dealer. Can take a lot of damage as well. Um, yeah, he feels like a fun enemy to fight. Like when I come across him, I'm like, okay, I gotta figure out who is he gonna guard. Do I want him to guard somebody? Do I focus on the other heroes? Do I blind this guy? Because you know, carve the toy and fell the tree. They can deal a lot of damage. So yeah. Um, okay, our lovely friend. Our old uh, ally and our newest enemy, the Antiquarian. Um, where do I put the Antiquarian? She's fun to fight, in my opinion. I actually don't dislike this fight. It is it is a bit of a grind, though, but it's fun. Like, it happens fairly rarely. I definitely have had runs where I run into her a lot. <laughs> um, but I think she's a fun fight. I think it's a, it's a unique fight. I think she makes um, the bandits or the... Uh, pillagers sorry suddenly be much more of a threat like the way that she can boost them and stuff so what became basic enemies were now like oh shit enemies with all the dodge and and block and stuff so i uh, i enjoy it i think it's a fun one uh next we have implication um honestly it's kind of boring you know what honestly it's going in c class it's like it's a cool idea i like what they did with it but like you know, it's just, again, it's just, you just blind it. Like, the mechanics are pretty sluggish. It's just there to, like, absorb damage. Um, like, it's, it's cool, but I really just, I kind of dread fighting them. I find it just kind of a slog, like a slog. You know, it's like, ugh, here's an implication fight. Okay, let's, let's deal with it. I don't really go like, ooh, implication. Hell yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the fire mouth, I think, is an A class enemy. I think this is one of the coolest designs they added to the game. I freaking love her design. I love her moves. I really am glad to see like an enemy that's built around the whole new fire uh, damage over time. Super cool. Super fun to fight. I don't think there's much more I need to say about that. Um, we have the ghoul. The ghoul is C-class. Like, just a really annoying enemy to fight. He's better than he was. He used to be dog shit when he was generating dodge tokens. Now he only generates block tokens. Um, but again, he doesn't drop anything fun. Double ghoul is like the dumbest thing in the world. Um, howl and like skull talk. Like, I don't know. I just don't. I, do, I dread fighting these guys. I don't find them fun at all. I just find them to be like they have really high debuff resist. They're pretty decently hard to give damage over time to. They have a really big pool of health. Eh, I just don't know. I just don't like. I just don't like them. Um, Hatchetman gets B class. He's just kind of again a run of the mill. I'm gonna do the same with the crack shot as well. Um, actually, no, I'll put Crackshot in A, and the reason is, like, I find the Hatchetman to be kind of boring, but I do like that the Crackshot has some pretty power, like, like, Front Mortar is pretty wild, can do Daze from the back, but, like, you can pull them forward, there's good, like, ways to counter them, Blind and Daze and, and Shuffle and things like that, um, and they are a threat, they're a threat, I kind of enjoy the, like, synergy with them, but I find the Hatchetman to just be kind of dull and drab, just, like, they do two attacks and, like, that's it, um, and, you know, the whole combo thing, like, yeah, it's kind of okay. Um, like, the, you know, combo in to finish him. But, yeah, I just don't find it very enjoyable. Um, the mongrel is... Uh, look, the mongrel's a good boy, okay? All the dogs are good boys. So that this has nothing to do with the fact that um, the mongrel is not a good boy or girl. I don't know. Um, but very annoying enemy to fight. And the fact that the watchdog doesn't seem to have a cooldown, or at least it's very, like... Their crit rate on the repost is also insane. Um, 
and their crit rate in general just seems insane. I, they tweak the crit rate a little bit. And I'll put them in B tier. I just don't enjoy fighting them. So, um, Gander is a fight that I actually haven't fought very often. Only a handful of times. It's still fairly rare. But I will say it's an A class. I love the design. I love the fact that it's like this like elite dog is pretty cool. Has some pretty cool support mechanics. Um, very, you know, it's got basically Hounds Harry. It can also do AoE stress. Um, it's a threat for an elite. Like it is a tough enemy. Um, and it has caused me a lot of anguish before. So I think it's a pretty good, I enjoy fighting. I think it's a cool addition. Um, this is the regular, the Rabid Nasher. I think that's a B-class enemy. It's not as annoying as the Mongrel. Um, you know, the Rabies is obviously annoying, but I think that's just, maybe that's just the Darkest Dungeon 1 classic in me and the traditionalist is, I love the fact that this enemy is still in the game. Um, you know, the dodge generation is annoying, but they're they're fairly decent and easy to deal with. Um, it's just the watchdog mechanic that I don't like. Um, okay, we're almost done here. So uh, the last ones we have, we have the Shambler, who is um, who is C tier. I'll put the Clapper Claws with them, with the, the Shambler tentacles. And the reason I say this is it's too easy. Way too easy of a fight. It used to be brutally tough. Well, not brutally tough, but it was a, it was a challenge in Darkest Dungeon 1. Um, I don't, I just find Shamblers kind of like, okay, hopefully I get two master, I get two mastery points and a trinket out of this and hopefully I get the good trinket. Um, I don't really like, oh God, a Shambler anymore. Um, maybe that's because they spawn more often, especially if you're on Infernal and so they needed to tone it down a little bit, but it just doesn't have the same oomph that it did in the first game. This is a really, really cool, horrifying graphic enemy that is supposed to be a huge threat. And it definitely has ended runs for me in the past, but at this point, I just, almost any team I have can deal with it effectively, right? So, not a huge fan. Um, I'm going to put both the spiders in A class. I think both the Weber and the Spitter, A, their design is super cool. Um, the only thing I dislike about them is maybe the amount of dodge they do start with, but they can't generate more, so it's kind of like, um, you know, they're fast, you get rid of their dodge, and then, and then you're good. Um, I will say that the the stun mechanic is maybe a little overtuned if there's lots of the Webbers, but they generally seem good about not stunning multiple people at the same time, so I haven't had that issue yet. Um, I think they're really cool enemy designs. I love fighting them. I actually think they're kind of fun to fight, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with that. Um, next, I'm going to do the... Uh, oh, what are these guys called? I can't remember. The little, the little piggy dudes. Um, they're B-class. I You know, actually... I, I digress. They're A-class. They actually have a pretty a pretty big variety of moves. Um, they have, I will say the most annoying thing is the stealth, but only two of them can stealth at a time. So you can't have all, even if you have four of them, not all four of them can stealth, only two of them can. So I think that's that's good. That's a good limitation. They can, they have a, vi a wide variety of damage um, from low end to very, very high end crits, which feels kind of in place for like this kind of small skittish, like um, rogue like enemy um this the uh the disease is probably the most annoying aspect of these guys but i do like the pull mechanic I, I like the fact that they can deal damage i like that they synergize with wilbur um yeah i think they're fun uh next we have the swine brute this is the regular swine guy I mean, he's b class i don't think he's super fun the reason being is that he basically just hits the front two rows non-stop all the time doesn't really have any variety of moves. I'd love him to get an additional move that does something a little different. Maybe a support move that like boosts the other enemies, or um, maybe something where he like moves himself back so then he can do his charge attack. Um, otherwise, he just sits in the front and just smacks the front two people over and over again. It's just kind of dull. And and I would say that Wilbur is only slightly better just because it's Wilbur and I like Wilbur and uh, he does get like obliterate masses and he does his design is cool and he requires a little bit more effort. But beyond that, I don't think he's much better than that. So yeah, here we go. This is my enemy tier list. I think that's every enemy in the game as it is now. Um, this obviously, I may be missing some, but I've gone through so many, I don't know. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up now. But if you enjoyed this kind of video, definitely check out my other tier lists. I've done one on Hero Pass. I've done one on Heroes. I've done one on every single trinket in the game. I plan on making more of these. So yeah, and if you enjoyed the rest of this content, do consider subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Go ahead and leave a like. And uh, yeah, hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next video.